So this is how the book begins, and it begins with a quote uh, from a Frenchman, quite a naughty Frenchman at that, who wrote a book called The Immoralist. One doesn't discover new lands without consenting to lose sight of the shore for long periods of time. André Gide. Imagine that you are a very particular kind of Englishman or woman, one burdened by strange and terrible fears. You are terrified of the sea, suspicious of the Scots, and consumed by a loathing of France and all things French. Your notion of hell involves not fire and brimstone, but bladderack, bagpipes and brie. And so profound and dreadful runs this fear that it drives you as far into your beloved realm as you can go, deep into the bosom of your native land, putting as much space as you can between you and your Gallic, Celtic and aquatic demons. Well, this is where you would come. Meriden, Warwickshire. Population 2734, grid reference SP240824, 93 miles equally from the Irish Sea, the Wash and the North Sea. Now, I like the Scots and I like the sea. I really, really like Debussy and Roquefort. But I've come here too on a journey to the centre of the earth. Well, a journey to the centre of England at least. Now I find some places in that first chapter that are quintessentially Middle English and I would say one of them is the, um, the, uh, the sort of tourist trap capital of the Cotswolds, Boughton on the Water. There's nowhere to park at Boughton on the Water, there never is. They call it a tourist trap, but it doesn't so much trap tourists as stun them into submission with its sheer cream tea and ducks on the pond niceness. Eventually, by killing a man with my bare hands, setting fire to his Audi and driving his grieving family into the hills with my brigands, I get a parking spot for an hour just by the Radish designer outlet. Radish is unusual amongst Borton retail outlets for not having the word Cotswolds as a prefix there's a Cotswolds perfumery, there's a Cotswolds bakery, there's a Cotswolds knitting shop. I wonder if anything would be deemed too outlandish or inapt. The Cotswolds nerve gas outlet, perhaps. And then I find later that uh, Meriden these days technically isn't the very middle of England by some obscure uh, sat-nav GPS system. It's actually a bit further down the road in Leicestershire. But I say that that's not really what matters because I'd already learned that Middle England was nothing to do with satellites and coordinates, rulers and pincers and protractors. We're not a nation of bureaucrats and autobahn builders. We are vague and romantic, a race of gentlemen scientists chasing butterflies with silly nets. Middle England and deep Englishness cannot be defined by measurements. It's about the food we eat and the music we listen to, the books we read and where we go on our days off, what makes us laugh and what makes us scared. It's about village greens and craft fairs and smokers under gazebos, seek shops and rasters in football tops and cycling memorials and Thai restaurants and Polish waitresses. You can't pinpoint that with your GPS. Besides, they can't move that monument in Meriden now. So no, on your bike, cold-hearted cartographer, I would look for Middle England through its fixations and its foibles. And next, I would test the water. <laughs>